now, you bitch. It's deer hunting season coming up in the UP, you know, the, uh, November 15th through the 30th. Uh, it's the high holy days in the UP. And I know in, growing up in Wisconsin, that's coming up very shortly. I, I thought I'd wear this attire, you know, the, uh, the flannel and the, uh, the blaze orange in the, the theme of what I'm going to talk about. I'm Jim Deering, I'm assistant to the bishop in the Northern Great Lakes Synod and director for Evangelical Mission. So one of the things the church is, is attempting to do is to do experiments, to, to branch out, to think outside the box. And that's a lot of the theme I'm gonna talk about, a particular ministry. Here, not that I have this memorized, so I have to look. Chapter 2, verse 8, the shepherds were out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Mark 1, 9, Jesus was baptized in a river, the River Jordan. The Spirit sent Jesus out into the wilderness for 40 days, Mark 1, 12 through 13. Jesus passed by the Sea of Galilee, Saw Simon and Andrew, said to them, follow me. And I... Mark 1, 16 through 17. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up, went out to a deserted place to pray. Mark 1, 35. Mark 4, verse 1. Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Matthew 5, 1, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, sat down, and began to teach. Luke 6, verse 1, one Sabbath, while Jesus was going through the grain fields, his disciples plucked some heads of grain. So it's very clear. Jesus' ministry was mostly outdoors. Amen? <laughs> Out under the vault of heaven, beneath the great... Last night, driving in to Green Bay, I stayed over Green Bay last night, probably one of the more spectacular sunsets I've ever seen. And, you know, I'm in my high-tech Prius hybrid, and it just makes you at 70 miles an hour, slow down maybe a little bit, and say, hey, there's something. This world that God created. Likewise, the early Christians spent most of their time outdoors, walking and so forth. I love Acts chapter 16. You should read that, that chapter. It's Paul's second missionary journey. There was a lot of walking. There was no Uber rides, <laughs> no mass transit. They walked. They traveled by boat, got over to Macedonia and in this, uh, to the city of Philippi. And Acts 16, verse 13. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate of the city by the river where we supposed that that was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. I, it's a, it's, I love that verse. People thinking that they're going to encounter God outdoors by a river. And by the way, I don't know where the men were, but the women were there. <laughs> I love that verse. Well, this expectation to encounter God outdoors, to worship and to be in creation, is really the foundational backdrop to a creative and collaborative ministry which our Northern Great Lakes Synod has been involved with since 2019. So, so for four years now, the Episcopal Diocese of Northern Michigan and we started a ministry we call UP Wild. And this UP Wild ministry experience 
it really began with three foundational values, nature, relationships, and faith. We believe that it is in nature that relationships can be nurtured in the context of faith in the creator of the universe. If you go to the website, upwild.org, upwild.org, on the home page, it describes this ministry. Wild Church creates opportunities to foster a deeper spiritual connection with God outdoors. Deep within the Christian tradition, there hides a wealth of wisdom on how to cultivate this relationship. It is time to bring this authenticity forward, especially in the wild setting of the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Most of us are in need of healing, just as our earth is. We aim to do this together. So what happens at a typical UP wild gathering? Uh, we oftentimes call this a nature prayer service. We, people gather at a location outdoors. It, it, it might be a pavilion, it might be by a waterfall, it might be by the shores of Lake Superior, it might be at a trailhead. Uh, gathering outdoors, and then there's a very, uh, there's a leader, and and a very much a warm welcome and, and stating you are welcome wherever you're coming from in your life. There are no expectations. It is just, it is pure invitation and welcome. And oftentimes there's an, a land acknowledgement. And for us in the UP, we acknowledge that we are on the ancestral homeland of the Anishinaabe, also known as Ojibwa, right? And then there might be some poetry read, some scripture read, and a prompt to think about something. And we're, we're sent off on individual, as individuals, we're sent off into the woods or next, next to the river or the waterfall. And we were sent off for 15 minutes to observe and to listen. And then we're, we gather back as a whole group and people are invited to share. Obviously not forced to share, but this is the beauty and power of being outdoors. There's something freeing in the soul, and people tend to share. <laughs> I saw this butterfly that I haven't seen for a while, or there, there are people who are birders who said, I've seen that one for a year or so. Or there are those that relate to something in creation that applies to something they're going through in their own life. It is quite amazing and powerful. Uh, and then there's a, there's a closing prayer. Sometimes we do the Eucharist. Here's a creative way to do the Eucharist in the UP. We had one of our, our local pastors up in the Keweenaw Peninsula there, up Houghton Hancock area where they get 300 inches of snow. <laughs> but in the Keweenaw, there's lots of berries. And so for the Eucharist, the people foraged berries and created the communion juice. And communion, the Eucharist was served wrapped in those big thimbleberry leaves. If you know what a thimbleberry is, Dainty, hairy kind of raspberry, but they had these big leaves. How cool is that? Talk about local sourcing for for experiencing the presence of Christ, body and blood. I attended two Palm Sunday outdoor worship services, but we renamed them Pine worship services. So rather than having palm branches, not too many palm branches in the UP, we took pine balms and cedar balm, uh, boughs, boughs, and strew them on, on the ground, and we marched on these boughs of cedar, and we sang all glory loud in honor. One time, invited an expert on mushrooms 
to teach us about foraging for mushrooms. Once a year, we gather at the Stonington Peninsula across from Gladstone, Escanaba, Little Bay de Noc, the northern edge of Lake Michigan, and the Stonington Peninsula is a fascinating gathering point for monarch butterflies. The beautiful and amazing monarch butterflies, they, they tend to gather there, and then they go thousands of miles uh, south. And, and we bless those monarchs and their migration. And we, we humble ourselves as human beings before our creator God to recognize if God can provide for that migration of this monarch butterfly, maybe we as humans can acknowledge his eye is on the sparrow and so he watches over me. His eye is on that monarch butterfly. I, I can't, my human mind can't wrap around that. How is that even possible? The miracle of grace. Who's showing up? I can honestly say it's all age groups. Our experiment originally was to focus on young adults, right? We always hear in the church, we need more youth. Um, but indeed, as we as got the vision for UP Wild, the sense was it, it wasn't just young adults and young people who are hungry for connecting to God with God in nature. It's all of us. And so we have, it's intergenerational. Pastors who show up to these gatherings. And I I think they're trying to supplement their, their faith life and, and they, the, their resonance with creation care. So we see that. We see traditional church goers. People are already going to church on Sunday morning in a building made with human hands, but they want to supplement their faith. And then we're also seeing people that we don't even know where they're coming from, <laughs> but I suspect they have been hurt by church or they have been disconnected, or they're just uninterested in what the traditional model of, okay, I gotta go into this building, I gotta go through a door. There's gonna be people who are gonna greet me and I have to smile at them. <laughs> there, you know, there's all, sometimes we, we ne neglect to understand the trauma for some people to go into a church. I have always loved church. I have always felt welcome in church. I have been blessed. But believe it or not, we know that's not the case for everybody. I remember being on one nature hike, and we started our hike already, and here comes this young, young couple, probably in their 20s, and they were trying to catch up. And I said, hi, yeah, we're just, you're fine, just just join on in. And, and, and the young woman said, what kind of church is this? I love that question. I, I, I would like to hope, I'd want more people to ask that question. <laughs> what kind of church is this? They had read on Facebook this announcement about a branch of UP Wild, which started in Marquette County, but it's branching out to the Keweenaw, so now we have UP Wild in the Keweenaw. And, and so I told this young woman, hey, everyone's welcome, I, just, just walk along with us, you'll get a sense of what this is about. We're, we're all welcome, we're coming from different traditions, and you know, um, yeah, it is a Christian community, we're not apologetic about that, but come on and experience this. And uh, in talking, you know, when you're on a trail, there's a way that you can have a conversation more nat naturally, pun intended, more in a more relaxed fashion than I think necessarily, you know, talking to someone in a fellowship hall, although that can happen too. And this, this young woman just started sharing a little of her background. I think she grew up apostolic Lutheran. I didn't know what apostolic Lutherans are. They're, I would say, a very extraordinarily conservative, conservative Lutheran body, pretty insular. They don't marry or date outside of their uh, apostolic Lutheran faith. She grew up in that tradition, 
had drifted away. Surprise, surprise. But she was curious about, what kind of church is this? And by the end of our gathering, as we were opening it up and sharing, this woman, this young, this 24-year-old woman, I'm guessing, opened up and prayed. Prayed for her grandmother, I think. I don't think that would have happened in a traditional church model. Maybe it, it can, but what the, the beauty of being outdoors. During the pandemic, we could gather safely outdoors while other churches had issues, right? And it was hard. And even sometimes, though, our UP Wild would offer uh, online Zoom sessions, and uh, the mission developer would point the camera out to beautiful Lake Superior and would read scripture and Mary Oliver and some uh, people reflecting on creation care, and people all over the world on the internet could feel like maybe not so isolated. How powerful is that? So you could go to the upwild.org website and see archives of, of some of these Zoom sessions. There's also some service aspects that we want to lift up in this ministry. One, one time we gathered in an Episcopal church, a basement, a fellowship hall, and an intergenerational event, we all were making Valentine's cards. And we explained to the kids and the families that these cards would be delivered to uh, nursing homes in the Marquette area. And on one occasion, we would gather uh, and worked with another kind of parachurch organization called the Cedar Tree Institute. Um, and we helped plant cedar trees. I love cedar trees. And of course, the Anishinaabe, the cedar tree is particularly uh, a holy thing. What we are seeing is not massive numbers of people showing up. We're, we don't have 200, and we're not in competition, right? But we're seeing people show up, and different people kind of rotating in and out with curiosities. And we're seeing others in our geographical area, in our Northern Great Lakes Synod, the UP in Northern Wisconsin, their interest in say, hey, we want, we want to do something like this in our backyard. And so now in the Rapid River Gladstone area, we have, we have a branch, a hub growing there. Uh, up in the Keweenaw, I mentioned, on the east end of the UP, it just started gathering. In the Marinette Menominee area and, and northern Wisconsin, we got Chuck here from Ascension Manaqua. There's a group of, of pastors and some lay people, and that's still part of our Northern Great Lakes Synod. So they, they've started some whole, uh, nature hikes. Uh, last uh, May, around our Synod assembly time, our Synod Youth Ministry Coordinator coordinated with our mission developer simultaneous uh, nature hikes throughout our Northern Great Lakes Synod. So how has this all happened? Well, we've been blessed with a great mission developer, a full-time mission developer uh, who works and consults, manages the websites, offers resources and encouragement. Uh, but it's not just the mission developer with our local pastors and lay people who volunteer to lead these nature hikes. Um, functional support, monetary support, emotional support <laughs> come from the ELCA and grant money, our Northern Great Lakes Synod, the National Episcopal Church, and the local Episcopal diocese. Some in individual congregations are making donations to this, as well as individuals. I make a monthly online gift, because I really believe in, in this ministry. Here's a testimonial, not from me, but from Ken. I'll paraphrase Ken. Ken is 87 years old. He's a retired social work professor. He, he grew up in faith communities. He would. He was in a variety of communities throughout his life. He found what he claims, he said, this is my church home, UP Wild. And, and, and Ken is a person of deep faith. And this just, this just resonated with him. 
And, and what a beautiful soul to have. This 87-year-old man, and then, yeah, that's his testimonial. And if he was here, he would say much more. What have we learned through this experiment? Three things. Flexibility is key. Collaboration is key. And experimentation, being willing to try something, not knowing exactly where the end result will be, but we're going to try something. And we're going to learn from that experiment. I think those three values are critical for the church community right now. The traditional Christian church remain. We'll still build buildings. And God bless architects and visionaries. This is a lovely, lovely sanctuary, by the way. This would be a cool place to worship. But you notice even here is that openness to the outdoors. Right? I love sanctuaries that remind us we're not going to church to escape, but to be grounded. And there's no better place to be grounded than to literally be outdoors. Jesus is still inviting us to come outdoors to quiet place to pray, to listen, and to be with others and the world whom God loves. Listening to this, and uh, I have an article from the Living Lutheran magazine, and I'll be glad to talk to you more about this to share a little slice of, I'll, I'll say a little slice of success, not without bumps along the road, but an effort to uh, try to experiment. Thank you.